Is it wrong for white parents to adopt black children? Karen and Michael say no, and they are in the midst of a battle to adopt Byron, the black foster child they have cared for since he was six days old. It is now 16 months later. If they lose Byron, they say it will be like a death in the family. Karen, Byron was placed with you, but now when you, what happened when you tried to adopt him? We um, had known that there was a possibility that Byron would be adopted if no family was involved. In about five and a half months, we questioned if things could get started for adoption and if that's the way it was going to go. And they said, well, let us get back to you next week. We had called and asked this question. And then they called back within a couple weeks and said, yes, we found the perfect family to adopt him and give him a home. And we had had him for five and a half months. And it was um, quite a shock because it wasn't to family. It was a total stranger. And we were told we couldn't ask any questions. And we didn't have any rights to know where he was going or what type of a family he was going to. It was the decision they made. It was essentially a, uh, a single black mother of two children of her own and two foster children already. Uh, and not to say that a single woman is incapable of raising children. That's not the point. But our point was is that Byron was doing well. He came to us addicted with cocaine and heroin. He was born, had suffered through this withdrawal for about a two-month period of time. And if he's not hurting, if he's growing and nurturing, and to see him now, he's a bull. He's doing fantastic, both uh, mentally and physically. Why would he be removed? So do you think that they made changes in his living situation because you wanted to adopt him? Had you just stayed quiet and continued to be his foster parents, do you think you would have raised him? We were told by a social worker, keep your mouth shut. Let's get past this six-month period of time, and then maybe at that point we'll see if we can get this adoption put through. Uh, so the fact, though, that we wanted to be up front and that we wanted to take care of, we wanted to do the right thing is, in essence, why we hit uh, an impasse with the county. Now, your situation is pretty similar to David's in that you have children of your own. You have three children of your own. That's correct. And so he's, it, do you, what kind of neighborhood do you live in? Do you live in a multicultural environment? We live in a, uh, a primarily white area. Um, however, we're in a brand new development where we are and in an area that's growing in, in the northwestern uh, Pennsylvania area. So we see that diversity changing. Our children go to private schools, and we, we see there quite a bit of uh, uh, interracial mixing. And, and quite honestly, it's not a problem at all. It's not a problem. David, do you think it will be a problem or could be a problem? Uh, I'm, yeah, what I was going to say is, of course it's fine when the, when the child's a toddler and young and still in your home, but wait till the kid gets out into the, com into the world on his own. You know, what kind of identity problems is he going to have, you know, as a teenager? These are, these are good points, and we, we're concerned with those also. We can also play devil's advocate, but we can't envision what will happen in the future. What we have to hope is that we have a strong enough family to be able to provide whatever needs all of these children have. And, and uh, we don't see this as an issue of Afro-Americans, and we want to get away from the hyphenated nature of separatism which is something that we feel is really hurting our country.